grab any learning from recent games just to see where you're currently at in your thinking so at this point here feels fairly good but where's the finish while i'm in the game as the time's running down opponents on 56 seconds i'm on 57 seconds time does make you not find the moves that are required so they brought the queen across so at this point um, I've brought my queen back down, not knowing where to find the the killer move. And the killer move is basically just taking this pawn here because the rook has got an x-ray through to the king. So we're looking further. Our potential idea now is we know full well the opponent is potentially coming here to come here to attack the queen. So if we can get our rook here, and it should be in time because when they go there then we can go here we will have a two on one on their bishop it's the long way around of doing things we could have probably gained an advantage a little bit earlier on but that's the way the brain works we're on 35 seconds they're on 31 seconds and then we bring the rook down you could sense the opponent felt oh i've got the queen the queen is trapped i'm getting it and we brought this rook in so the bishop can't move now because of the check onto the king all we need to do is take so it gives us a bit of an advantage because the pawn can't take here queen is still annoyingly protecting the pawn but at least we've gained a bit of an advantage by actually taking their pawn off pattern training say find the best move for black Okay, so sometimes it can be very simple, sometimes it can be complex. So we utilize the answer process to work our way through the system and see what is required, potentially what is required in the game. Find the best move for black. The king is in the corner. Queen doesn't have any support there, but the queen can come here to put a check on the king. Queen could go back, but then it would get checkmated. Could go here, but then it loses the bishop. But we wouldn't do that because the queen would be on the queen. So we could, you could do that, do a simple exchange type thing. Queen comes here. But he doesn't have to bring the queen down because he can bring his king here. So would that be a bit annoying? So is it really that position after all? It's not completely forcing. We do have a two on one on this bishop. So we kind of material gain. We do have these pawns though against the rook. Do we want to take that chance? Can the rook simply take? It's on the queen. Is that forcing the queen to stay there? Probably so. So the queen's probably going to have to take, and then we have the queen. So the rook takes. If the queen wants to do something fancy, could come here with a check on our king, though. That's the thing. But if it did do that, the rook would just take it. Yeah, because it's on the same line. If it decided to move somewhere else out of the way, say just to, not even here because the queen will take. If it went there, the rook would just go down and that would be checkmate. So it's kind of forced the queen to take the rook. So I'm going to go with the rook taking the bishop. And then we can take with the queen. Excellent. So it's good to talk it through. It might look simple to some people, you know, doing these speedy, fasty um, type things. But for us to try and look at developing our longer play, proper chess um, games, you need to take that time to talk through the process and find the better move and keep challenging yourself in the pattern training. Uh, just to really find the better move was that move the real one because these patterns can really test you and trick you and 
It's not to say that they're 100% proved because there are occasions where other options are as viable as the chosen option. So continue training. So we'll do three as part of the package. So again, best move for white this time, actually. Best move for white. White's got the bishop pawns there. So bishop is protecting this pawn here if it pushed onto the king. King's going to be looking to block. Bishop does have a check here on the king. Could just move across and block. Anything else? Not moving this pawn because the rook is on this pawn. So it's got to be one of these bishop or the pawn. Pawn is more a bit of aggressive. Boom. It's elevating the pawn up a bit. King comes across. This pawn comes up to support. That looks a bit slower, does that though? Does it want to be a little bit more impactive or or is it a slow process thing? Hmm. Bishop check. King comes across blocking the pawn. All seems a bit slow still. Or is it the king moving to here, just supporting the pawn? Again, that's not forcing in any way. Hmm. It feels tricky. It is definitely find the best move for white, yeah? Push, elevates the pawn. That's a little bit more mm -mm, in your face. Bishop's protecting, but then he's got a two on one. And I think there is time for this pawn to push up. So I think it is going to be as simple as that. Pawn pushes here. King comes across. Forget our king. Let's up. Comes across. Pawn comes to support. And then it's looking to put a check on their king. But yeah. So pawn comes up. Don't know what the rook does. That's why it's not kind of forcing, is it? So I don't know what they're going to do with the rook. They'll bring it round here. Then hit the king. Hit the king. It's not going to go there. It has to come out to the side. And then potential for something like this. Pawn pushes. It's at these stages here where... Your brain can go, when you're in an over-the-board game, you're playing online or whatever, a longer game, um, the brain can go like this, well, I'm tired of this now. You know, oh, I'm bored of this. And you could probably still keep on doing the calculation, but really your brain is going, I'm bored of this. I'm not interested in this. Um, yeah, I'll make it look like I'm doing a calculation, but I'm just going to do this simple move, no matter what you come up with, because I don't know what the opponent's going to do. And that's it. I've made my choice. And you could sit there for 20, 30 minutes even. And your brain is subconsciously just saying, look, I don't know the answer. This is what I'm going to do. And that kind of calculation is the calculation that makes you just do devil finger and, you know, makes an inappropriate move. And for me, I'm trying to challenge that that thought process. I, I can feel it when it comes in, you know, definitely. I'm a, I can tell by the way my body moves and stuff um, when I'm in that sort of attitude of, well, I don't know the answer. It, it surely is that. It's just that. That's all it is. So once I'm at that stage, I'm not really looking for any further solutions. All I'm wanting to do is seek clarification that what I've calculated is right and nothing is going to sway me from that and that can take you a long time it can take you like i say 15 30 20 minutes 40 minutes and that's a long time to be inappropriately calculating so in this one here 
we've basically said, well, we think it's this pawn move here, puts the check on the king. King's going to come to block. Then we said we're potentially then just pushing this pawn up here, supporting the pawn with the idea that it's going to eventually hit the king, put a check on. Our concern is then, okay, once we've done this pawn move here, we know the king's moved, we can move this pawn up. But then after that, we don't really have an answer as to what their rook is going to do. So that's where our brain has gone to sleep. So I could have spent five, ten minutes on this particular movement here and got to that stage of, you know, oh, it is that, it is that. I don't know what their rook's going to do. So I'm going to stick with that. So that's my two, two calculation. But I've got to push myself to the end of the calculation as best possible. So I'm going to look at the variables for what black can do now in this um, pattern training. So we've gone one, two, so our pawns are here. So the rook can come across. Probably go into a white square, but okay, can come across. Don't think he'd go there though, because the bishop would put a check on the king and get the rook, wouldn't it? So if it was going to come across, it'd come across here. Their king is still there. This pawn is here. We would be able to get a check on the king in time. The king cannot come back here because this pawn is protecting, so it would have to come here. Okay, so that's a plus. So it would have to come there, and we would have time to then get a queen before the rook does get any checks on the king. So that's as final as I can get it for that particular movement of the rook. Does the same thing board for going for the rook going the other way. So we push one, check, king moves across, we push the pawn up to support the pawn, and then the rook maybe comes across, either to here or to here, whichever. Pawn is there, king is there we still will have time to push the pawn so it's going to be too late to the party it looks like whatever they actually do there is one more move that the rook can do does this disturb it or not if we go one one pawn pushes rook goes up attacking the bishop again it's a movement that the pawn can still go here the king can't come back and that's the way I need to retrain my brain. Once I hit that stage of, it is that, there's nothing else, I've done it. And believe me, there are many occasions where I have sat and done big, massive calculations, well, spent time on inappropriate calculation uh, methods, such as what I've explained where I'm just convincing myself that that is the move, that is the move, that is the move, so nothing else is going to sway. And you feel good because you sat there and you're thinking, you know, you're thinking, um, but you, you all you're doing is thinking about that one calculation and seeking lots of clarification around why it is the right move. And that's why devil finger comes into play, because... Once you've done all of that calculation, then when you actually go to make the move, then your brain goes, oh, but there's a different option here. This one looks better than all the 45 minutes of calculation that I've sat doing inappropriate calculation on. So I'll make this move. And there's been no calculation time spent on that um, devil finger move. And that's why it is the devil finger, because it has no true foundation or basis for any kind of uh, methodology so for doing appropriate calculation you really have to take it to the nth degree of what each piece can potentially do and then that's a full calculation that's a, a more beneficial calculation if your brain is going i don't have time to do this i'm bored of this 
then you are going to make an inappropriate move based on inappropriate calculations and you're going to make a devil finger move. Shall we see if we're right? Do you know there was one thing we didn't cover? Out of all of that uh, movement, one thing we didn't cover. If we put the check on, the rook can just take the pawn. But that's probably even worse for them, because this pawn here is supported by our king. So let's run that one through as well. It's good to talk, isn't it? This is why I'm saying you have to do the full calculation as best possible. It takes away the tunnel vision type thing. The art of the possible. What can the opponent do? What can I do? So let's have a look at this one. This probably is the one that's going to happen. But the key thing is still this pawn push as the first move. So if the rook does take and the bishop takes, the king takes. So it's taking itself away from the kind of opposition of the pawn. Our king can move here and there's no stopping this pawn from getting promoted to a queen. Excellent. And I think that is the whole all now. The main, the impetus of the move is got to be the pawn push. And the rook takes after all of that. So the bishop takes and the rest is, as we say, yes. Yeah, so if they did take, just to show, well, you don't have to do the pawn move that way. I, For me, I would probably go here in fear that, well, the, he could probably come back around, but he's still going to have to move back anyway, so he may as well just bring the king up. So he's not going to go there, and this pawn can just go ramping up. So there's different ways of doing it, but at the end of the day, the result is the same. So yes, make inappropriate calculations appropriate, and really look at Every, every every avenue if your brain is saying it's tired you need to probably just take a little bit of a break come back and have the mindset that you are actually going to look at the calculation properly not just you want to and you can't take it any further yeah your maximum potentially is going to be four if you can't go past any four then you know it, you might be looking at the wrong position. Yeah, you don't want to go past four. Re For me, you don't need to go past four calculation. Once you've looked at what every piece can do, like we eventually ended up looking at what every piece can do on the board, you're not going to go more than four moves ahead re in reality. You're not doing like a 20 move calculation or anything like that. Um, being, be sensible with your brain. Four move calculation is going to be your best best idea especially coming towards the end game as well you don't need to do anything fancy or great just have a look at what each piece can do and then if you have to go to a four move calculation then be it so be it but i can get proper guarantee you're not going to need to do that especially when it's coming towards the end game it's going to be the crucial one twos of what each piece can do but if you ignore a piece and then when you come to do your movement, then you realize, oh, I forgot to calculate that piece. It's not that you didn't calculate 20, 50 moves ahead. It's just that you didn't incorporate that piece in your calculation. It probably was just a one-step calculation. But in the grand scheme of things, you, you feel like, oh, man, I, I forgot about this, that, and the other, X, Y, and Z. And it mounts to, well, my calculation's not right. I'm not calculating deep enough and stuff. That's not what deepness is for calculation. Calculation is, are you including all the pieces in that puzzle? And then what impact does that piece have on the movement on the board? And as part of your development package, then you have to apply any learning from your evaluation, from your pattern training. So we're playing a 30 minute, 10 second game here, just to get into the swing of the development. So just open up the pawn, 
go for a general feel of the game. If you're looking at trying to memorize openings and who did what in 1876 and this, that and the other, then you're probably going to fall short because you're not going to have time to pull all of that stuff out of the bag. So a small piece attacking the higher piece at the minute. Queen's going back. It's got a nice ankle here with that square bishop has gone off the board. So I'm going to reverse the attack onto the bishop. So our bishop now is attacking their bishop. So going to take with the queen. Queen is opposite their king at the minute. A pawn is blocking the way. So they're attacking our dark square bishop. Maybe we don't give that up just yet. Let's just bring it here for now. It's not a really good bishop because our pawns are going to be on dark squares in the centre. Keep things simple. I'm going to take the knight off the board. Small piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. But behind his knight is a pawn of ours. So we're going to have to protect that pawn. So we're going to swing here and then probably bring the bishop here just to protect. And then maybe a rook opposite the queen might be of benefit to us. So we'll bring the rook opposite the queen. Just x-raying through. And we can take, is it going to be isolated this pawn or do we want to swing another pawn in here? I think I like the idea of the queen being opposite the king. So I'm actually going to take the knight with the queen. It's okay, so we're moving pretty quick. Could be a pretty draw, drawn line. Is there any credence in doing this? We give up a pawn in a sense. Push here, takes, takes, takes. But it does give us a moment to get doubled up. But he can double up and defend. So I'm going to get this rook involved. Leaning on their forward pawn. A single queen move instead of a rook move. I think he's looking for his rook to come here, isn't he? To attack the pawn. Does that give us a bit of still attacking here? And if they do take, then we go here. This is like wishful calculation because you see how I didn't show this one taking. <laughs> and that's probably the one they're going to take with because there's nothing behind protecting this pawn. So there's elements of attacking their queen, which I think I'm going to go for. They may not go for it, but hey, could improve our position. Maybe a rook over here. That's longer term and it's a bit obvious. Yeah, they're not going for it. So they come down for a pawn here. If they forget themselves, if we push here and they think, oh, I've got this for free, it can happen. Or if we push there, then we're there, 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 there. I'm going to push here anyway. I think they may go for it, forgetting that the queen has got this diagonal. Forward motions usually usually blur. Oh, it's not done it. It's not done it. Ah, damn, okay. It still might. No, it's not done it. All right, so we could come here, but then his rook comes across, attacks the rook, rook. But then if we take, it come, come, comes down onto this pawn anyway. I'm going to take with the rook. So we know now he's aware of this pawn here. And if we go here, we're protecting this pawn because he's looking for a back rank checkmate. But what I think is going to happen is the queen is going to take the pawn. So that then the queen comes off of that line and then he gets the back rank. So that's what I think is going to happen. So we're going to lose the pawn, I think. Is there a better way of... If he does that, rook takes, then his rook comes again. It's a move order thing. Now, if we went like this and took that rook... Yep, and then his rook takes, then we get the back rank checkmate. So let's do that. After all that thinking, it wasn't like a four move calculation that we had to do. It was just look, making sure that we were looking at all, all the, the potential movements of each of the pieces. Because it looked more aggressive from their side with the rook coming in. But then when you look at it, we're actually going to be getting the back rank checkmate. What's that? They have left the game. Yeah.
so that yeah that's quite interesting and um, basically based off of the stuff we've been working on within this package um excellent we'll claim victory on that no more to be said really okay back to the puzzle or pattern training as i like to call it and find the best move for white okay find the best move for white instantly my eyes were drawn to just taking the queen here maybe they're saving that takes king takes and then we've got bishop against the knight in my brain i'm thinking this bishop looks kind of jammed in here don't look like it's got anywhere to go okay if the bishop then attack the knight well let's take this one out of the way if the bishop attack the knight if the queen takes pawn takes that's too much ifs there isn't it so it's not kind of forced queen takes no the queen just takes <laughs> Oh, actually, ah, you know, that's so simple. Crikey, overthinking it or what? So it is taking, and then the king takes, and then the bishop x rays through to the king, and we win the knight. Damn, you know, you can overthink things. And there we go. Brilliant. Nice one. I was looking at what each piece could do, and I'm looking at the simplicity of that queen tape, but then. I'm looking, well, this bishop's going to be jammed in for the rest of the game. It doesn't look good. But the advantage is that it's going to get the x-ray through. Excellent. Okay, we'll do another one. And find the best move for white. So, obviously, instantly, you just want to take the bishop. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong with the bishop. Then you can see that there's a check here on the king. And anything else? That's it. That's what I'm instantly drawn to. So I'm going to focus on these two first. This one looks a little bit simple. It's not forcing anything. It's just capturing a piece. So I, I genuinely don't think it's going to be that. This forces the king to move. It's a check on the king. So they're going to move here. There's only one place they can move. So there's space. So it's attacking the knight. Knight physically can come here. And this pawn cannot take the knight. Because the rook has got the x-ray through to the king. So the king has to move, and it probably doesn't want to get checked again, so it's probably going to move here, onto the white square. But then the knight has to move, and we would lose the bishop, wouldn't we? We wouldn't be able to take the bishop. Right, okay, so something's not... That part's making sense. I mean, if we just rushed and take the bishop, then we're going to lose tempo. So there's something happening up here that we need to take care of. Check has to move here. Check, pawn can't take. So the king moves into the corner. We do have a white square bishop. But that pawn is blocking the way. And the rook can't take the pawn. Because the king is there. The knight is here. There's not any more check. Oh, we take the rook off the board. Damn. Take the rook off the board. So it's a higher piece. Still, I'm not happy because we're not being able to take the bishop here. Unless, of course, they decide, okay, well, this rook takes the knight. And then we take the bishop. That's a bit of an if, but, and maybe situation, isn't it? Let's just break that down. I need to take it to the nth degree of my physical ability, okay? All right. Let's go. One. Two. Three. 
So I can push it to four, can't I? Now the assumption is, I'm thinking, is the uh, does the bishop escape? Or does their rook take? If it doesn't, right, okay, so if the bishop goes and escapes to somewhere here, then the knight can take another piece and we're on a higher piece. But is it trapped? No, because it can come here. Excellent. So this whirlwind knight can cause quite a bit of damage, it looks like, just from that. So let's just ignore the fact that we are on this bishop at all. And depending on what they do from that rook taking the knight, uh, the knight taking the rook will depend on whether we physically take the bishop off the board. I believe that is the process. That is what I'm going with. There is no devil finger in there. This, we've followed the process through to the fourth calculation. As you can see, doing four calculation is still quite a lot. You know, and this is why I don't think there's any point going further. The maximum really is four. But, you know, you'll find your own way. If you want to be a genius and you want to do 50 move calculation and the game's over and done with, then that's cool. But you have to base it on what the opponent potentially is going to be doing. So let's go. Oh, before I do that, I need to confirm that that is the calculation now because I've done it. I've done a lot of rambling after it. I need to make sure that I'm doing the right stuff. So knight putting the check on. Putting the check on. Oh, and it stopped there. <laughs> oh, cracky. That's the thing with these damn calculators. You don't know how far it's going to take because sometimes it says, oh, continue on. Keep continuing. So at least I'm happy that we continued up to the four move calculation. Okay, in for one more, last one. So we're doing three again. Let's have a look. Your turn, best move as white. Damn, no black ones. Okay, best move as white. So this looks straight off. I'm thinking the queen can't come here to put a check on the king. Can't go there to put a check on the king. It can come here to put a check on the king. It's attacking the knight. King can come here to defend. And then we do have little checks here on the king. They can hide away. If they hide away, we can take the knight. And we can take the knight either way. So it looks like we're going to win the knight. But is that all that this is about? It does look like it, doesn't it? I mean, we do have a two-on-one on the pawn as well. But what we don't really want is for the queen to be coming here, putting a check on, or to be coming here and getting a checkmate. So we don't really want the knight to be moving anywhere. So you could attack the queen. That's a basic thing, but I don't think it's that. I absolutely don't think that the computer is going to be looking to trade off the queen. But we have to look at it as an option. Queen takes. If the queen takes, then the knight takes. That doesn't look too bad. We're protecting the pawn here, but look at these pawns ready to fly. Our pawns aren't fast enough. Yep. Yeah. Even after we've taken there, these pawns are flying down. So in no, no way is that the, the movement, I don't think at all. So I think we're going to win a knight, I think, somehow. I think that's what this is about. So a queen comes here, puts the check on, comes down. Although it does look really basic, doesn't it? Comes down, we put the check on. Can't protect the knight anymore. Yeah, it goes back to where he came from or hides in the corner. I think that's it. I don't think there's any other arty business. The Queen does have a check here as well. Let's have a look at that position. We, we covered here, covered there. Does have a check there, but it's there's no follow on from there for black to be concerned with. 
Yeah, so just the fact the knight is actually on the queen, so we're not going to come back there. So if it goes there, then it goes there. Then there's not, yeah, there's definitely nothing. So I think the queen is coming here and putting the check on. <clears throat> and then it's going up again. There's no further movements down here that's going to force anything. So I think we're going to go here like this. Ah, it's good to talk. So that's how you kind of improve, well, your calculation, you know, in terms of focusing on appropriate calculation rather than I have found the answer, that is it, I'm sticking with it and sitting there for 45 minutes onwards just looking at the calculation in your terms and not looking at it in the fullest realms of what can each piece do is each piece being involved in your calculation? Have you calculated too far ahead? Or have you calculated too far ahead, but not included all of the pieces? Which is probably the worst case scenario. Or have you just not included other pieces and you're just happy with what you've done and you can't think of anything else and you're not willing to go break through that barrier of the calculation tiredness? If it's that one, then you're going to make a, a devil finger move and your calculation is going to be totally wrong and you'll be beating yourself up, up afterwards. And so take that moment, take that break to say, right, okay, am I, am I doing the calculation correctly? Because that's once you're once you've developed in chess and you you, you know what pieces can do etc and all that type of stuff. So you you you're a bit experienced now in the game of chess. Um, that is the one thing to me that really sets the difference in terms of your development. And I, like I say, I'm no expert, nothing like that. But for me personally, for my own development, these are the things that I'm seeing within myself. Uh, is that that's the only thing letting you down in a sense? Is if you're not calculating appropriately, then you're going to be making the duff moves. So the way you practice is the way that you're going to play. And it's keeping things dirt simple as well. Real simple, but simplicity can only go so far. You've got to really say, well, okay, well, what does simple actually mean? A simple calculation means incorporating all the pieces that need to be involved in that um, calculation and then making sure that you've assessed them to your ability and not to anybody else's ability. Um, if you've included it in there, then you've included it in there. And if it was incorrect, then at least you included the pieces in there. And then you can look at the evaluation with the computer later on, once you've done it yourself, analysed it yourself, checked it through, made sure that once you've completed the game and you've come home, or maybe you were disadvantaged, you can look at it, come home, do the evaluation yourself without any computer help or anything and maybe you'll see why the move order was probably wrong if you had incorporated all the pieces it probably was just a move order and that can be easily rectified because at least you in, you included all of the relevant pieces in the actual um calculation the worst thing is when you don't include a piece in the calculation and then you make the move and then you go, I didn't see that. That's like the, you know, that's the killer for most chess players. Oh, I didn't see that. Yep. So if that happens to quite a lot of chess players, there's got to be something said about doing more appropriate calculation. Include all the pieces in there, not just your pieces, the opponent's pieces as well. What can they actually do? And really, don't be selective about the positioning on the board because we are all very guilty of looking at calculation and basically trying to fashion it so that we're advantageous. This is the way it's going to work, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you have to look at the negative side of your calculation, you know, the if, buts and maybes. And then you'll find the truer picture of the calculation and hopefully preventing less 
devil finger maneuvers. We're just doing another 30-10 just to hopefully highlight the calculation process. In the end game, if we get to there. Just to show you don't have to do massive, massive lengthy calculations just to get the desired result. It is just about looking at what can each piece do. Have I included each piece in the calculation? It's more so for the end game, but you can utilize it for as you're developing, you know, in your own opening phases. Right from the very start. And that was a movement that was done very quickly. And you feel like you're falling into a trap, don't you? But I'm going to take here. We're going to be on the queen. What am I missing? Oh, they're being silly. They're being silly. They've given up. They don't have the patience for um, a long play game. I don't know why they accepted the long play game. Yeah, just giving up the pieces. Bye bye. Silliness. Yes, that's not very interesting. It's not clever. Let's get this over and done with. Let's go and play a proper game. Silliness. Right, let's see if we get a proper game. Come on. 30 10. Oh, let's go on this. Th this person's. Oh, never mind. That person had put a 30 30 seeking, so I would have, assume, would have assumed they were going to be more inclined to play the longer game. Okay, let's get cracking. Let's get the night out. All right, so they're looking to sort of block down the center in a way. Let's just get the bishop out. But as you develop in your chess, you'll develop your own kind of emotional responses or strategical responses or however you want to respond depending on the makeup that you've got um will drive forward how you're going to make your moves in your games going to castle king safety and the idea for us is trying to give our king some company especially to walk you know coming into the mid game i'm going to take here just to make sure so bringing the bishop here kind of allows us to Get the king some company. It's always going to be attacking that pawn. Let's just go here. Opening up our white square bishop. So they're coming for the cheap type stuff. So we're just going to block that off. So we've either got elements of developing the bishop or pushing the pawn. So we'll... Develop the bishop because it's attacking the bishop behind the queen. Let's take the bishop off the ball before it causes any trouble. 
can look to get the knight off the board. It does have a potential attack on the queen going forward. So at the moment, you kind of see, so he's moved the queen out of the way. I'm trying to utilize the pieces at the right moment. Bishop can attack, but he does have the knight here. So we could push the pawn up, looking to just um, condense the queen in a little bit. And then the knight still has this. I'm going to push the pawn. It's actually hitting the pawn. This pawn does have support here. We can attack. It's just then he can drop here and our knight can't come here because this pawn is protecting there. Which is a bit annoying. So we could attack their knight. Keep these pawns doubled. I'm going to attack the knight. It's probably jumping here, but no, I don't think they will because they'll... Mind you, they can because they've got the bishop as well supporting. So if the bishop did take, the queen can take, queen can take, bishop's going to be here. And they have gone for it as well. So if we don't do that and we go for something like this, the knight's got a deadly square here, he's got a fork. So we may as well just get that out of the way. Bishop's going to be in this little section here. Let's take. We don't have to take the queen. We can just sit here. But still, the bishop is still going to end up there. Rook's going to be attacking anyway. Let me see, let me see. But it's only a bishop by itself, so it's not going to cause us any trouble, is it? So get the bishop. Let's attack this pawn. It's got no protection. Comes and protects. Come back around again with the knight. Knight's not really got any sting, really. Come back around again. Come here. It's attacking. Oh, he's opening up this. So if we leave it, then he just takes, then... Let's get the knight here, attacking this pawn. Might not take that either. If he takes, maybe the knight can take, keeping these doubled. Or do we take with this? Rook's going to attack the knight. Knight comes up, takes the pawn, rook comes down. He's got a bit of this activity as well. Right. Well, and his king hasn't castled yet, but we're... <sighs> knight takes. Only problem I've got with the knight takes is that this pawn is going to get challenged by the rook anyway, isn't it? So we <clears throat> may as well just take... May as well just take... Maybe we can defend with the rook. On the open file. And it's uh, attacking. Do you think that? Okay. Don't overthink it. There's no point going here. Because it, it's going to be trapped. It doesn't have anywhere to go. So coming here. Attacking this pawn. Kind of makes sense for me. Obviously the rook's wanting to come here. Oh no. What's happened? Oh. I don't believe it. Oh. Well, a pawn for a pawn, I suppose, isn't it? Because isn't it? we're going to be taking their pawn. Let's grab. Right. Now, Bishop can sit here or sit here. It's probably going to sit here because this pawn will be able to touch. So this one will be the one. And we'll never get this out of there. Opportunity to own the file. Is that a key thing, I think? Yeah. And how does the knight get the bishop away from here? We'd have to go up, round. Well, it's a long way around, isn't it? So it needs to be here. Here or here. Or here. 
Right, it's okay. So we, if we go rushing for the pawn, it's just going to drop. We're... Oh, and they've resigned. Yes. <laughs> Quick look at the analysis. See if it was resignable. Oh, minus 2.3. So that's not too bad. It's not too shabby. Yeah, I'm, I'm fi fairly happy with that. Um, looked a bit, a little bit dangerous for us in a sense of, well, they could just sit there and do nothing. And we did have play. We just potentially would have to try and get the bishop off the board somehow with the knight. Pawns are nicely elevated up, so that felt half decent. One of the key things is we are owning the file with the rook at the minute. He could look for the exchange quite easily. So, I mean, I suppose it could go here. We would probably look to maybe do that, maybe. Don't know. Depends on what they, you know, what they were going to do. So, we didn't get a chance to push the full calculation, doing appropriate calculation type thing in the end game. But we got the start of that throughout the game using appropriate manoeuvres from the 1-2 calculations. I've got a training game, 30 minutes, zero increment. So I'm hoping this is going to be a tough one. Or maybe they're not going to start. Looks like it's going to abort. They have problems with their signal. Oh, they're on. They're on, and they've come out with some odd-looking manoeuvre. Let's just bring the knight out here. <sighs> There's always people trying some new stuff out. Might not be new, but it, you know. I think I saw this recently. Some some streamer was doing an odd opening, you know, saying, well, okay, this is what they use against um, people that they don't know type thing. So I think it looks very similar to this. I bet this player's um, trying it out. Let's go here. I didn't look at the response to it because I was always just saying, well, you just do what you do on the gate and in the game. Why are you trying to think 20 or 50 moves ahead from the continuation of it? The opponent might not react in any way, shape or form the way that you're thinking. So you'd waste about, you'd waste all that thinking time. So the push, uh, let's just block the pawn here. Let's block the Scud missiles. So it's got nice advanced pawns here. That's good. Are they supported with their pieces at this moment? I'm not looking to break through at this stage. You know, I was thinking of that, but then he's got that. So I don't, I'm not in any rush. Let's just bring the bishop and get castled. I don't think there's a problem with that. It's a massive pawn opening here. It's usually the kind of thought of, well, I'll send out my weakest pieces. Let's castle. Don't need to debate that. King safety. We believe it's safe. Now I think they're probably looking to start ramping without castling. Okay, interesting times. I'm going to hit it now. See what it wants to do. Does it push past? If they were going to castle, they're castling on the queen side. It doesn't look like they're in a rush to do any of that. It looks like this is like chaos. You know, this is they like the chaos theory. Just throw a few things out there. Let's just throw things to the wind. And like we said, yeah, they're just going to start blasting down and stuff. I'm going to take, I'm not going to over analyze that one. Just keep it dirt simple. Just open up the white square bishop. Knight's not going to be staying there for too long because he's got the support of his queen. Situation, what's that going on about? Boom, 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 boom. Knights hunt the bishops in our mantra, so simply bring the knight attacking the bishop. 
I have to trust in the mantra. That is the order of the game. I have to trust in the mantra. In the mental Rolodex of the 59 ways to um, beat my own chess. I've got to be able to select from those 59 options rather than making something up on the spot. Let's take knights on the bishops. Not in all cases, you know, it depends on the, on the position and stuff. X-ray through to the queen. That seems okay-ish. But it's a long way off yet. Could hit the bishop with the pawn. It's not going to go there, it has to go back. Do have a space here. Could attack the bishop now. Opens up the pawn, gives space for the rook. Mm -hmm. I think I'm I'm liking the idea of putting pressure on the king. So I'm going to bring the rook here, X-ray through to the king, and then attacking their bishop if it's still there. So now they're going to no, they're not. Oh, we will get the rook for free-ish. Yeah, I see the idea. We've got to check on the king. So then we could come back and attack the bishop. Do we want the pawn here though? That's the thing, isn't it? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Queen could come and attack, but then his rook comes across. Bishop attacks, pawn takes. Rook's on this pawn. Let's attack. don't feel like I'm built yet okay let's go here rook potentially has this pawn but really the idea is to get to this king so how do we get to it queen needs to get in there somehow now it's got space there but this pawn is there got this pawn pushing it's attacking the rook rook takes queen takes so we're looking for a queen exchange what, what's the deal if the queen takes the Bishop takes the knight for free. If the knight takes, we take the queen for f well, not for free. Let's take that. It's like a massive snowball effect, isn't it? Right, okay. King's moved, and we want to be defending the pawn with the rook, maybe, or defending with the pawn, defending with the pawn. Maybe attacking their queen. It's just going to take the pawn. Let's defend the pawn with the pawn. Take time. Don't need to rush. Bishop's going to get attacked. Can bring it back here. Can take the pawn for now, but we'll see. Is there any benefits getting the rook here? Queen needs to needs that dark square diagonal. Oh, we'll just go for the exchange. Don't think they're gonna exchange though. But if they don't, we get the attack here. So trying to block our... Shall we take the pawn first? Or is that too much? It's too much, isn't it? Let's just go here first. Attack the queen. That rook and going here is too long. They may readjust and find a better position somehow. Okay, so we wanted this spot, but he's kind of blocked it and he's attacking our bishop. Let's just take the pawn. Does that give us time to even double up here? Let's go here. I don't know if it's worth it going here, here. Take, king takes, no. Right, knight needs to do something then. Although maybe that's, nope, nope. So we could push, looking to do this, but I suppose this queen can come here. I suppose we can take this push. Let's 
So that was a very odd, very odd opening from the opponent. But um, I like that sort of thing where they come out with that odd stuff because you have to think differently. You know, you have to do things differently. So the concepts that you've got help you to work with that. Rather than practicing set lines for responses to X, Y, and Z, I think conceptual type um, positional chess is really the way to go for my own chess anyway. Okay, nice game.